Hey, this is Lance from Langchain. OpenAI just released their Agents SDK, which builds on some prior work that they released called Swarm. So this is a library that allows you to build multi-agent workflows. And the SDK extends it with a few different things, notably improved handoffs, guardrails, tracing. Now I wanna talk about building multi-agent systems using fully open source and local models. I'll show using a Swarm approach as well as a supervisor approach. So here I'm in Langgraph Studio. I have a very simple multi-agent system with a flight assistant agent and hotel assistant agent. As a toy example, I can ask a question. The flight assistant addresses the question. It calls this search flight tools based upon my input. It finds a flight for me. I can tell it I want to then book this flight and it books my flight. Now I can tell it I want to book a hotel as well. This is the key idea behind many of these multi-agent libraries, such as Swarm. There's a handoff mechanism that allows you to hand off from one agent to another. So I say I want to book a hotel and we can see the flight assistant hands off to the hotel assistant and the hotel assistant finds a hotel for me. Now I'm going to open up the trace and show you something interesting. So I'm in Langsmith now and I can look at all the turns with my agent. We can see turn one, the flight assistant made a call to the search flight tools in response to our input. Now I want to draw your attention to one important thing here. What's pretty cool is that I'm actually running this locally on my laptop. So I'm running Chatolama with Quen254 14B Instruct as my model of choice. And this model running locally on my laptop is able to orchestrate this multi-agent workflow using Langgraph's Swarm implementation. So first, it makes a tool call to search flights. We can see the tool call made here. That goes back to our model, which then identifies the flight is found. In that second turn, we said book it. It calls that book flight tool. The flight is booked. And that third turn, this is the most interesting part. We said, let's book a hotel. And we can see it can then call this transfer to, host, to hotel assistant tool, which is the key idea in the swarm architecture. It allows for different agents to interact with the user and transfer the conversation to one another when they deem fit. For example, the flight assistant sees that the next question from the user relates to hotels and it can transfer over to the hotel assistant, which then addresses the user's needs. That's the key idea behind all these multi-agent libraries. There's some handoff mechanism between the agents. Now I wanna pull back briefly and explain a bit more about what's happening here. First, it's worth level setting what actually is an agent. An agent is an LLM directing its own actions based upon environmental feedback from the action or tool call. In simple terms, you can think about this as tool calling in a loop. We have a nice tutorial. And I do want to call out that agents are different than workflows. Workflows are some kind of directed control flow in a predefined code path. They, it can involve LLM calls. The key point of an agent is it can freely make tool calls in a loop until no tool call is made, in which case the agent typically finishes. Okay. So that's an agent. Now, one of the most interesting questions that I've been looking into for a long time is how can I actually run agents locally on my laptop? To do that, I need small models that actually can perform tool calling effectively. Now, I will call out, I've done a lot of work on local workflows. Workflows don't necessarily need tool calling. You can build very simple routers with structured outputs, and this actually works really well for a lot of applications. But as noted, the classic definition of an agent is tool calling in a loop, so we need the ability to call tools locally if we want to build locally running agents. Now I'll show you a nice resource here that I like to use. If you go to this Berkeley function calling leaderboard right here, you can scroll through models based upon their rank on this tool calling benchmark. Now you see the state of the art or the best performing are of course large and often closed source models like GPT-40. O1, Gemini, but you'll see something interesting. Pretty high up is Quen25, which is open source. Now this is a larger version, 72 billion parameter model. It's difficult to run locally unless you have a GPU. But if you scroll down, you'll see something interesting. Quen2514 B Instruct is actually rank 30, which is quite strong for a 14 billion parameter model. Now 14 billion parameters is a model size that can often be run locally depending on your machine. So I have a Mac M2 Max, 32 gig, and I can run this locally with reasonable latency. It's not super fast, but it's acceptable. If you scroll down even further, you see at rank 52, Quen 257B. So basically the Quen 25 models are quite strong at function calling as we see here, and they can be run locally. So these are the models that I've chosen to work with in general. 
when I need to do local function calling or build local agents. Now how to access the Quinn model, so they are on Olama as an example, you can just pull them as shown here and you can run them as I show right here. And again, this is Quinn 2.5 and I can initialize it just like we see here. Now we've covered what an agent is. We've identified that there are some models that are small and open source that you can use to actually build locally running agents due to their performance at tool calling. Now, why do we care about multi-agent systems? The main point here is that, particularly when running things locally, it can be useful to separate concerns. If you take an LLM, bind a very large number of tools, you can increase the likelihood of confusion. The model may call the wrong tool given a request. However, if you have a, you have a subset of agents that have specialized tasks, one for flight booking like we saw, one for hotel booking, with independent tools, it can often result in better performance, especially if you're using smaller models. So that's kind of the intuition behind multi-agent architectures. Now, an interesting point is there's different ways you can set up multi-agent architectures. So we have two separate videos on this talking about supervisor and swarm as two approaches. And we also have open source packages that implement both of these with LangGraph. Now, I want to highlight the supervisor approach first. This is pretty intuitive. The idea here is simply you have a supervisor model that has access to some number of, okay, the supervisor interacts with the user and farms out tasks or hands off to the subagents, which do their work, and they always respond with their final output back to the supervisor. So those subagents never actually interact with the user. You can think about them as subcontractors. The supervisor hands off a task, they do the task, and the output is passed back to the supervisor. That's one approach, pretty intuitive. Now, another is what we saw previously, which is Swarm where there's different agents and they can both interact with the user and they can all freely hand off to one another. So we saw that with the case pre previously that we looked at in studio, the hotel agent starts, interacts with the user. When the flight agent starts, interacts with the user. When the user asks for hotel booking, the flight agent transfers over to the hotel agent, which then executes. And some of the trade-offs with supervisor, supervisor is always a starting point versus swarm. It's the last active agent or default agent. In terms of the flow and interaction, the supervisor architecture always interacts with the user via the supervisor, whereas swarm, each agent has the ability to hand off to any other agent and interact with the user. So it kind of depends on your application. If you have an application where you really want to centralize the interaction with the user with an overall supervisor and subcontract out tasks, Supervisor is good architecture. If you have a problem that benefits from multiple agents being able to engage with the user and just freely hand off between one another, then you may consider Swarm. We have two packages, Graph Supervisor and LangGraph Swarm, which you can have a look at. And previously in Studio, I was using LangGraph Swarm. So you can see it works really nicely. And what's pretty cool is these are simple enough that they can be run with open source models run locally on your machine, as we just saw. Now let's see how to build multi-agent architectures in a notebook using these packages. So you can see I just have a few pip installs and I grabbed LangGraph Supervisor and I also grabbed LangGraph Swarm. So you previously saw Swarm working in Studio, so you have a sense for how that works. I'll go ahead and show Supervisor here in the notebook just to give you a kind of concrete sense for how to set up these types of systems. So as mentioned, I'm gonna use LangChain Olama and I'm gonna go ahead and initialize two different models. I'll use 14B Instruct which I previously used in Studio, as we saw. Now here's where I'm gonna find my agents. First, I'm gonna set up some tools and add multiply in a mock web search tool. And I'm gonna go ahead and use this create React agent pre-built. So just to explain this a little bit more, this workflows and agents tutorial, I will link in the video. Go to the agent part. You can see this is a simple diagram of an agent. And right here, we go ahead and show implementation of a simple agent. We define some tools. Now this is very precisely what happens under the hood here. We defined an LM node, which will go ahead and invoke the LM. We'll define a tool node, which will basically just execute a tool and some conditional logic to continue until no tool calls are made. We construct that and we test invoking it. Now, this logic that you see right here is so commonly used that we do have a pre-built for it. And that's exactly what we just imported in our notebook as well. It's called the Create React Agent from LangGraph Pre-built. And it's literally just this stuff. So again, I want to be careful with abstraction. If you want to implement yourself from scratch, just follow what's in this tutorial. But sometimes I use this create react agent just as shorthand, where all you need to do is go ahead and pass the LM and your tool list to this create react agent. 
So I just talked about create react agent and we'll use it to create two different agents, one for math, one for research. Each one, we simply provide a prompt instructing it what its role is and what tools has access to. We pass in the tools. That's really all we need to do. And again, remember for the model, we're using Quen 14B instruct. Now here's where we define the supervisor. And this is what where we're importing from that Langchain supervisor package. We give it an overall prompt indicating the tools it has, which are these handoff tools, and the two different sub-agents that it's overseeing. We bind the sub-agents here. We provide our model again being Quen, and we provide this prompt. Here's a visualization of a workflow where the supervisor can conditionally call either expert or decide to end. Let's go ahead and run this. And again, I want to show that it's actually possible to set up these simple multi-agent systems, in this case using supervisor, but previously using swarm, that can actually run locally if you choose the right local model. And again, as mentioned, based upon the Berkeley leaderboard, I do like the Quen25 models. Both 7B Instruct and 14B Instruct are two that I've tested. And I found that these actually work pretty well. We saw Swarm working previously. Now let's see Supervisor working. So it ran in 45 seconds. We can see the full set of messages here, where here's our input, the supervisor, executes a transfer to the research expert. The research expert makes a tool call. Here's the web search tool. We go back to the supervisor. Supervisor provides a summary to the user. We look at the Langsmith trace to convince ourselves that everything was working properly. So we can see again, where you're running Quen 254TB locally on my machine. The first call to the supervisor takes the question, transfers to the research expert. The research expert then, we can see right here, performs a tool call to web search. The web search tool returns the results and the search agent provides our answer which gets transferred back to the supervisor. Supervisor then provides a summary, as we see right here, which is returned to the user. So again, all running locally, in this case, using a different architecture, supervisor versus swarm, but clearly illustrating the ability to perform handoffs between supervisor and subagents, and within each subagent make correct tool call. So what's pretty cool about this is, both of these packages, swarm and supervisor, are two different approaches for building multi-agent systems. They are pretty simple to set up. They can work even with local models as we've seen here. I think the key points to recognize are two things. When working with local models, make sure you're very thoughtful about which one you're choosing. In particular, I like to use this function calling leaderboard to guide that decision. Some local models don't even implement tool calling at all and you'll see an error thrown and some implement it poorly. I found the Quen25 models to be the best from my testing, but we should keep an eye out on new open source models being released that are capable of function calling. In addition, when using LangGraph, you can easily use Studio to visualize your multi-agent systems and you can use LangSmith to see the traces, to look under the hood at everything happening. We did that both with Supervisor and with Swarm, showing tool calling within sub-agents as well as handoff between agents or between supervisor and agent in the case of supervisor. So hopefully this is a simple introduction to building multi-agent systems. We can even build them with local models in this particular case, Quen25. So feel free to leave any comments or questions below. Thanks.